Hey everybody, in this video, I wanna show you this car here. This is a 2021, it's a Honda CRV. And this particular version is what's called the Elegance model. In this video, I wanna show you around the features on the inside and the outside of the car. And we're gonna go for a drive in the car as well. If there's any information you want on this car, Brian is my name, and you can get me at 086-843-1945 if there's information you want on the car or financing or trading in your old car. Anyway, because the weather's so poor, I think we'll start off by going for a drive. The first thing then is I've got a rake reach steering wheel, so it goes up and down and in and out. And the driver's seat's got good adjustment with lumbar support for your lower back and a height adjuster here too. And because it's the Elegance model, the passenger actually gets a similar height adjuster too and lumbar support for lower back as well. Once you're comfortable in your seat then, obviously you want to put on your safety belt, but check this out. We'll put the safety belt on. See the way it tightens up? That's really cool. I used to see that in really high spec Mercedes years ago. It just gives you a nice secure feeling. It actually, it's more comfortable as well where the safety belt is tightened in and it makes you feel safe. There's lots of safety features in a car like this, but some of the first ones, steel bars for side impact protection, an airbag here, an airbag over there, an airbag all the way down along here, and an airbag in the side of the seat along here as well. And that's the same on the driver's side. And there's lots of other safety that we're going to see in a minute. Start the car, foot on the brake, and then you've got a power button down here. Press that, and then you get this start up sequence along through here. And we're going to run through that in a sec. How unusual, a car in a garage with low fuel. On a day like today then, it's lashing rain. So you have a couple of settings on the um, wipers, but the one I'm going to look for here is the first setting, which is automatic. And what that'll do is it'll look for rain that'll fall on the sensor. And then as it gets uh, heavy, it'll actually engage the wipers. I can have it very unsensitive, or I can have it very sensitive. In terms of lighting, uh, on a day like today, okay, I'll turn on the lights, but really what I could have done is I could have left it in automatic, and that means then the lights will come on themselves for daytime, nighttime, or darkness, and they'll also dip whenever you meet traffic. My experience of these sort of automatic lights is daytime, nighttime, 100%. The meeting traffic thing, it's imperfect, every single car I've ever driven, but around 80 odd percent of the time, it'll get it right, but you have to manually intervene every now and then. But sometimes you'll be going down a road, you'll meet someone and it'll dip before you've even thought about dipping. There is lots of stuff in the cabin, we'll go through that in a little while, but we are pretty much ready to drive from here forward. So over here, I can drive, I can go for neutral, I can reverse, or I can park. One really cool feature on these, we mightn't see today because we're not gonna hit the motorway. See this, a blind spot indicator. That's really cool on the motorway because if you look at your mirror and there is someone outside your visual field, they're right on the corner of the bumper in that little blind spot, that orange light will come on to warn you that they're there. And if you indicate and decide to change lane, it'll have an audible beep and it'll start flashing to make sure you don't move and crash into the car that you haven't even seen. So anyway, let's go for a drive in the car. I suppose one of the things that people always are curious about in these cars is just exactly how the hybrid mode works. Well, not hybrid mode, just how the whole hybrid setup works. So it is what Toyota refer to as self-charging. I'm not a big fan of that phrase, but essentially there is no plug involved. It's a non-plug-in hybrid. One thing about hybrids, they're extremely quiet because they get to run on a battery um, every now and then. And then CRVs in general, they have noise cancellation technology inside the cabin to make it really quiet. Nice visibility, nice big mirrors, and just a nice place to be. Speed sign recognition in here, which will tell you if you're exceeding the speed. And then down here, as you can see, the car, 50, 60 kilometers an hour, it can run on the battery only. So in this case, then the engine is cut back in and it's a continuous cycle between all the different modes. When you're driving a car like this, it's continuously moving between battery and engine in the effort to try and make the car as efficient as possible, but also keeping in mind if you need power or if you just want to cruise. In terms of what the gauge is telling you along here, we see that the petrol and the battery are driving the car. Now it's just the petrol engine. Now the petrol engine is driving the car and charging the battery. And that's where then this inverted commas self-charging kind of uh, phrase comes from. Once that battery has been charged to a sufficient level, it'll start carrying the car along, in this case on battery only driving the wheels, until it runs low and then eventually it'll rely on the engine to charge back up again. So like continuous cycle you don't need to know but it's nice to see what's happening and if you want to contribute you can actually also increase the charging by using this paddle it increases the regenerative braking which is collecting power from the wheels as the car slows down hybrids also I find they're quite torquey so when you put your foot down there's this immediate response because you have a petrol engine and also a battery as well to give you this really immediate response I quite enjoy driving these cars in a back road I always have there's a good suspension setup you feel confident when you're driving them it pretty much feels like a car there's a number of modes if you want you can actually manually intervene so I can use this EV mode which means I can do a full electric drive or I can do an eco mode where it's going to reduce how aggressive the cruise control and air conditioner is in favor of fuel economy or I can also go for the sport mode to give me better throttle response so if you're still here thanks for sticking around let's have a look at some of the other stuff in the car so we'll see in a while there's really nice leather there's a nice piano black along here there is a tweeter up here there is a speaker down here so there's a good stereo system we saw the start stop button parting i can't talk here for some reason parking sensors even front and rear 
So they kind of work twofold over here. It's going to warn you uh, behind that's visual, but it's also got the little warning here. So if it has an obstruction, it'll tell you roughly where it is. And the screen does the same. And it's similar then when you're moving forward, it's also going to tell you if you've got a problem here and over here as well. The camera's got a couple of neat modes. So basically over here, you can have a white screen, normal screen. You can have a looking down screen. It's got trajectory. So depending what direction you're going, it's also got this little pop out along here to tell you what's going on around the car. And this one has a wider view, basically. So when you're reversing out of a gateway, for example, you can see what you can see in the camera and that's what the sensors will pick up. But it's also able to tell you if there's something outside your visual field coming from the right or the left that hasn't come onto the camera yet. So a car coming down this way or coming the other way or someone on a bike or whatever it is, so it's dead handy. Again, back down in here then, there is lane departure warning, which warns you if you drift out of your lane by vibrating the steering wheel and giving you a visual and also audio signal. Uh, collision mitigation under 30 kilometers an hour. If you don't touch the brake pedal, the car is going to detect that. And if it detects something in front of you, it'll try and stop the car short of whatever the object is, even if you haven't reacted. And one other little thing that's unique to CRV in the Honda range, you have this heated section along here, which will unstick your window wipers in the winter if they're frozen to the screen. So moving on here, steering wheel then, there is cruise control. So in here you can see the functions changing. I can set basically how far, actually I'll try that in a sec. And I've also got a lane keep. So sorry, I just drifted past something there. This was a lane change warning. Whereas this one up here is actually coming up here. That's a lane keep assist. The warning is just a warning. If you're drifting out of lane, it's less elegant. It just uh, gives you all the warnings and tries to get you back off. Whereas the lane keep assist is active the whole time and constantly trying to keep you in the dead center. So there are two different functions. The other thing I glanced across was there was cruise control, which we could set over here, but you can tell the car how far to stay behind the car in front. As an automatic car then, this car is going to have low speed follow. So that means you could technically follow the car in front and lock onto it. If they slow down, you slow down. If they come to a halt, you come to a halt. So it's really, really, that is, that's going to be really handy for some people in cities. The fuel gauge is over here on the right. The battery gauge is over here on the left. You don't have to care about this. That'll take care of itself, but it's, you know, it's just there. Uh, and after that, then we saw while we were driving, we could toggle through fuel, average speed, fuel efficiency, the speed sign recognition. Um, the other thing I was going to say to you is there is a speed limiter on the car. So over here, then I can set a speed limiter. That's fine. I can set that and, you know, keep me at whatever speed, but I can also set it to respect speed signs. So if I go into a 50 kilometer an hour zone, it'll flash up 50 kilometers an hour, but it'll also reduce power and give me an audible beep if I'm gone over that speed. So again, thank you for sticking around if you're still with me. This is over here, controls for radio, and there's also controls for Bluetooth in through there as well. Down through here, a little bit of storage, some drinks holders, a little bit more storage, 12 volt outlet, movable armrest. Uh, it opens up and you can push that to cover stuff or pull it back to leave it open. There's two USB connectors. They've corrected this because this is a slightly facelifted model. They used to be down there. It was grand, but they're a bit out of the way, but these are much more accessible now. Here's the setup we talked about already with Sport, Eco, and um, EV Drive. Uh, after that, then the various functions on the gearbox. Handbrake, brake hold, which stops the brakes. Basically, if you hit the brakes, I'll be honest, it's not as useful on an automatic car, but it stops the car from rolling backwards, but automatic cars kind of do that anyway. The climate control functions is a heated seat for the driver and also for the passenger over here. Dual zone climate, so we've got different temperatures on each side of the car. Speed up or slow down the fan. Front and rear windscreen demisters and the rear windscreen is also linked to demisting the wing mirrors. I can speed up or slow down the fan or I can just hit the climate button here. And I've also got this panel if I want as well. Up here then the Honda Connect unit is navigation, which is Garmin, audio, which is where you want the music to come from, be it Bluetooth uh, or smartphone or um, USB or radio, phone settings for taking calls, trip information, general settings, smartphone connection. Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which allows you to obviously use Google Maps and things like Spotify and Audible and all these kind of apps that will come up on the screen. You can do them via Bluetooth if you don't have that, but it's much neater when you have that because this information comes up on the screen. If you've got an Apple, it looks like an Apple screen. If you have an Android, it looks like an Android screen. Up here, then there is electrochromatic rear mirror, which darkens itself if someone comes up behind you. And in through here, there's a sunglasses holder and it's also a conversation mirror. So when you're driving along, you can look at who's behind you and then you can see what's also happening in the rear seats. And I often have sat in a car with a young child, having to move that down there to look at the child. Whereas in a CRV, I can do both. Let's look at the boot on this car anyway. So the boot's really big, but it always has been in a CRV. There's a light here. There is a light here. There is a speaker over here. And then there's a small little bit of storage down through there just for the toolkit. And when I take out that tunnel cover, I can grab this handle and I can grab this handle and the seats fall down. And that ends up leaving me this massive load area in the back of the car. If you've anything awkward you want to transport. 
getting into the back of the car, the doors actually open at a really wide right angle, which is dead handy for loading or moving around kids or just as adults getting in. The material on this model of CRV, I think is really upmarket. There's lovely brushed aluminium here and here, piano black here, a tweeter here and a speaker here. And the type of material that's on the seats, look at all the designs in the fabric. Again, it's a really nice upmarket look and beige leather is always a really nice bright place to be in the car. For anyone that's curious about size, then I am six foot. So if I close the door and hold the camera really badly, sorry about that. So if I sit in the car, that's the amount of headroom I'm going to have. And it's probably easier from this side. This is the amount of legroom I'm going to have if I'm sitting behind myself, so it's really good. And then I got an armrest here with a drinks holder. And I also have ventilation and I've also got two USB connectors in here as well. What's also nice in Honda's is as well, you have these nice LED lights inside and at nighttime a little guide light that lights up the area. Just a small bit of light in the cabin when it's dark. And then there's the outside of the car. This is what's called a crystal red pearl. It's a really cool looking colour. Other features we're talking about then on the outside of the car, you have these which are LED. So the fog lights are LED, they look really cool. They've got chrome surrounds. There's brushed aluminium along the front of the bumper. The nose is much more like the older model CRV 0708 and I like that. It's got this big round chrome setup and then the headlights in here are LED all the way with LED cornering lights which are down here which light up a junction when you're turning into it and also these nice big LED strips for indicators. Again small bits of detail, you see the badge here so it's nice uh, and prominent. You see it's got the blue in here as well so you always see that on the hybrid versions of Hondas. Again staying on the theme of LED so there's big LED strips on those rear lights and then there's big LED indicator stacks either side as well for indicators. The wheels in the car are an 18 inch wheel. They come with Dunlop tires which are really good from the factory. They have this grey section here but in there then there's a really bright polished uh, diamond cut section. They look really cool when the sun shines on them or under artificial light at night. In my opinion that's actually the best colour for that car available but you know what colour is a personal choice. I just think it really stands out. Even other things in the car like there's nice chrome down along here there's brushed aluminium for the two um, roof bars up on top and then, uh, sorry, roof rails even. And then after that, there's nice chrome around the windows as well. I quite like the Mazdas in their saloons and SUVs, which come with that nice red color. And this actually reminds me of the same thing as well. And you know what's nice about a CRV? It's actually something different. There's tons of some of the other popular SUVs on the road, but these CRVs, just something that you won't see absolutely everywhere. And I like that, when you have something that you've spent a lot of money on, it's nice to have something that's a little bit different. It's got a lot of features and specification, um, but it's also something that people might look at twice because they don't see them everywhere as well. So anyway, if you want information, 086-843-1945. Brian is my name, Fitzpatrick's Garage, Kildare Town. Uh, if you're looking at this video, this car is actually for sale. It is part of our fleet. It'll have very low mileage and it'll be sold at a demonstrator discount. Finance is available. The car will have a three-year warranty from the date of registration. It will also have a five-year battery warranty as well. And if there's a trade-in that you have, then I'm quite happy to give you some idea what kind of money you're talking about before you trade in. Or if you're somebody watching on YouTube at home and you just wanted information on the CRV, then hopefully the video has been useful. This, like you were saying to you, is kind of second from the top. It's the Elegance model. Um, but if I've missed something, just let me know. Uh, sorry, I was going to say call me, but probably the best thing to do if you're on YouTube is let me know in the comment section. If you think the video is useful, please do like and subscribe. Anyway, thanks so many for watching and hopefully chat to you soon.